All right. Can you hear me now? Is that, yes, I see the sound now. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know, Jacqueline. I'm so glad that I'm here to share with you some tools, some essential sewing tools and quilting tools and some extras. Yay. Awesome. No sound. I can't hear you. Are you saying you still can't? Oh, yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> All right. Always something that happens with tech. Every live stream, I've just learned to go with the flow. Hey, Deneen, so glad that you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live also on Amazon. There are some early Prime Day sales happening today and tomorrow. So I'm going to go live every single day, today and tomorrow, three times each day to share with you some of those things. But today, our quilting time is about basic sewing tools and specific tools to make a tote bag. To do it yourself, tote bag. It's this one right here. How you can make this tote bag. Let me go to my overhead camera. All right. Why is it that? Okay, there it is. <laughs> Tech, 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 tech problems, <laughs> always. <laughs> so we're going to go over this tech. This is a, a tote. It's a Lydia tote bag. So we're going to go over some of the basic stuff that you can use to make this and some extras. Okay. All right. So a little bit of a rocky start. <laughs> All right. So let's get started. The first thing is that we need fabric. And I have some fabric in the carousel on Amazon, and I love these fabrics by Connecting Threads. These fabrics are fantastic. Let's do the overhead cam. That way you can see how beautiful these fabrics are. I like to get, when I want an assortment, a variety of colors, I like to get um, fat quarter bundles. So I get a fat, a quarter of a yard in multiple colors. And that's what these are. These are all a quarter of a yard in multiple colors. And you can get any, um, they have several, put it that way. They have several that have different values. These are rainbow, but they are on the lighter side on this end. And then these are on and, and they're kind of pastel, but you can also get a fat quarter bundle of blues, of um, warm fall colors. You decide what you want to put in your stash, right? We always have a little bit of fabric for stash, and that's what I like. So that I can take out a piece of fabric when I'm working on a smaller project like a tote bag. See that nice mottled look? I love that. It's a solid, but it has some texture to it because of the way the fabric is made. It's not completely solid, and I like that. So I like uh, fabric that looks solid but isn't. It has some dimension to it. So that's the first thing that we always want to have. We want to have some basic tools. And that would be, that would include fabric. We need fabric, right? But let's go over the specific tool that we need to make this tote. I'm going to bring this over. And the first one in the carousel is this Creative Grids Hexi Ruler. We're using a hexagon ruler to help cut the fabric. That's what this is. This will cut the fabric into that half hexy shape. But you can also make full hexagons with it. It just depends on how you're going to use it. And it tells you, because you can see that this area is a little bit different right here, so that you can get the half hexy. And there it tells you right there the seam allowance. Maybe you can see that, I'm not sure, probably not. I think it's white. Yeah, it's hard to see it on the black, but it does say that. Let's see if you can see it there. 
Yeah, there we go. Half hexagon. So this is your seam allowance right here for the half hexagon. And that's one of the tools that you need to make the tote bag. So you need that, but you also need a way to cut the fabric, right? Let me pull my little table over here. I'm gonna pull this table over. Okay, folks. So I can remove this. And I want to show you this rotating mat. It's in the carousel. I just highlighted it in the carousel. And why would, would you want a rotating mat? A rotating mat is when you want to use a template like this one and you don't want to move the fabric. So we have some fabric here and we want to cut the shape. Let me just do half of that just so that you can see. I'm not going to really cut it, but so if I want to cut this half hexy, right? I might decide, well, I'm going to put my seam allowance here. Include my seam allowance, put it on the edge of the fabric right here. Take my rotary cutter, right? In this case, I can go on all three sides. But if I wanted to do a full hexagon cut, instead of a half hexy, Right? I want to cut, cut, and cut, but I don't want to move the template. So instead, you move the mat, and that's where your rotating mat comes into play. That rotating mat is going to help you reposition the ruler without shifting, without shifting, and then you would continue to make your cuts. And I'm using a 45 millimeter rotary cutter, which is a good size to get started with. If you have not started using rotary cutters, hey, how are you, modern day tech? So glad that you're here. Awesome. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I'm going to be here later doing a live streaming tour. I have some new tech that I picked up recently, so I'm excited about that. So that's going to be at 7. I don't know if you're streaming today. Let me know and I'll stop by. So Deneen says, once you cut them out, is it easy to sew? Yes, it's easy to sew because with this particular template, Deneen, it has little holes here. These are at the quarter inch intersection between this side and this side. So you're going to put your pen in there and you're going to put a dot on your fabric if you are going to stitch a whole hexagon to another. So you can make multiple sizes. This is one size and then here's the next size and so on and so on. And each one of these sizes have holes that you can mark your fabric. And so what you do is you stitch from one dot to the other. Then you're going to bring in the next piece of fabric, the next hexagon, and you're going to stitch from dot to dot. That's how you're able to do it when you're stitching whole hexagons. But another way that requires more seams is to stitch half hexagons and to stitch it a row at a time. A row at a time. Let me give you an example. So this is made with half hexagons. And we're using the Creative Grids ruler, right? So here's your the half hexagon shape right here. And then here's a half hexagon up here. Here, here, and then a half hexagon here. There's a seam right here. I could have cut out the whole hexagon but instead, 
I cut half. So here's a half hex, half hex, and you stitch this row, and then you stitch this row, and then you stitch the rows together. Hopefully that helps. That's one way without having to do the marking on the full hexagon template. You can cut half hexagons and stitch them a row at a time. That can make for potentially, ah, you like it. Okay, thanks, wonderful. I'm glad that you like it. All right, so let me put this back. Okay, that's there. All right, so that's why we want to be able to have a rotating mat. Now, also, we can get a mat like this one underneath. Both of these are Fiskars. This is 18 by 24 inches, a medium size mat. It's perfect for a smaller space. But then you have this one. This is um, 12 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. That's the rotating mat. So these are some of the basic tools that you need to be able to create this tote bag, right? But they're also tools that you're going to keep in your toolbox for other things in your crafting um, tool chest. Now, when we are making a quilt, whether it's a hexagon or not, we want other basic tools. Hey, Wilda, so glad you're here. Welcome, Wilda's on Amazon. Welcome, welcome. So glad, happy Prime Day, yes. <laughs> we have some basic tools that we need for making, whether it's a tote bag or a quilt. And some of those tools I've included. And one is pressing. Pressing is so important when it comes to our uh, crafting, sewing. And whether it's a quilt or garments, pressing can make all the difference in how we prep our fabric. And I like to use tools that are going to help me get good results. That's the key, good results, right? What are those tools? One is a good uh, pressing surface whether it's an ironing board that's well-made or a wool mat. So I'm going to highlight that in the carousel. And here is my wool mat. Let me get my wool mat here. This is the wool mat. Let's go to the overhead camera. It's, it's pretty dense. See how dense that is? It's thick and dense so that when you put the fabric on top it's going to press beautifully sometimes with foam mat foam based ironing surfaces you get indentations in your fabric this is going to minimize the indentations from pressing when you have the seam folded over you're also going to be able to get nice results without stretching. That's the other thing. You can, sometimes when you're working with fabric, if you haven't prepped the fabric ahead of time, we're going to talk about prep, it can stretch. It can stretch. We don't want to stretch the seams or the fabric because then you're going to have problems sewing your quilt blocks together or your garments together. You're just going to have problems. So you want a ironing surface that's not going to stretch the fabric and give you good results. And you want an iron iron that's going to help you with that. And the iron that I like is the Aliso. And it's actually my friend, Wilda. <laughs> Wilda, I blame you <laughs> for getting me addicted to these Aliso smart irons. This Aliso smart iron is amazing. And it is a prime early access uh, sale. Don't miss out. It is 20% off. Let's go to the overhead camera. So you can get it in multiple colors. I got this beautiful turquoise. It's a smart iron. 
<laughs> glad you could help. Wilda says she's glad she could help get me addicted to Aliso irons. <laughs> so I can't live without them now. And then this is the iron that you don't have to stand upright. It stays in the horizontal position. It has these feet that retract so that it raises up above the fabric. So you have this leg right here and this one here. Let's look at a full video. That way you get a full idea of what this looks like. So here it is. This is the iron. I love it. It's a smart iron. It has a lot of pro features. We're going to look at some of those features. It's fantastic. Of course, it has auto shut off. Don't forget, read the manual. It's not packing material. Read the manual. Read the manual. <laughs> you always get the best out of your products when you read the manual, folks. You get the best. So let's take a look. It has two functions for adding steam and water. And when you turn the dial all the way to the end with those three dots, you're going to get your steam. And then that white lever will tell you how much steam you get. You can spray water directly too. Now it has the diamond ceramic flow plate. Notice where the holes are. The holes are along the edge. They're not in the center. So take note of that when you are steaming something. Nice long power cord with a swivel at the end. That means it's not gonna get tangled. I love that. Never overfill your iron. Always fill it to that line on the iron itself. You can press for steam. Make sure you, you put the settings correctly for steam. And then you can also set it for no steam. Now, it looks like I am in the way. You can't see anything. Let me see if I can move myself out of the way. There I go. <laughs> so now... I have steam. This steam is powerful. You see those puffs? Poof, poof, good steam. It's so strong that you can hold this upright and vertical and steam your curtains, steam your garments. So Wilda says she loves the extra long cord. Yeah, I love that too. Especially when you're, you're pressing a large quilt top, right? I love it. And you can spray water directly onto fabric if you need to, but that steam is powerful. I love it, love it, love it. Now you can just turn it off and turn off the steam, no steam. And then you'll get an indication that the green light is flashing. That means it's changing the heat setting because I turned it lower for no steam and I turned the steam off. Once it's at the correct desired temperature, it's going to uh, go a solid green, solid green. This is a fantastic iron for home use, for craft use, for multiple uses. And it has that smart feature, that smart feature. The smart feature allows you to touch the iron and it will lower. When you release the iron, you take your hand off of the handle, what happens? It raises up off the fabric. Touch it, then it lowers. You don't have to put the iron upright when you're not using it because of the smart touch feature. Remember, these are the legs that keep it raised up off and above the fabric, okay? That is my Aliso Pro. Love it, love it. Take advantage of the sale. Now, remember I talked about fabric prep. Part of my fabric prep for getting excellent results in my projects, and along with pressing, is washing and starching or sizing the fabric. And I use two things. I use either starch savvy, and I'll highlight that in the carousel, Starch Savvy is going to help you. Anytime that I use starch, what it does, it holds the fabric fibers in place. While it's holding those fabric fibers in place for cutting, 
for stitching, for pressing, for quilting, it's not going to shift. Have you ever taken really um, loosey-goosey fabric, lightweight fabric, and you try to sew two pieces together and one is shifting, you can't quite pin it for it to stay together? I like to minimize how much the fabric moves. And by using starch, it helps me in every single step. Whether it's quilting, sewing, or uh, piecing, it, or cutting, all of those, all three, cutting, sewing, quilting, it minimizes the fabric movement so I get better results. More accurate seam allowances, accurate um, quilting without getting bunches or pleats in the quilting. So these would be my basic tools, my essential sewing tools for my projects. So starch savvy is one. Another one is stay flow. Stay flow is one that I use that is a concentrate. This is a concentrate that I can decide how much starch I want. A little, a lot, a lot less. You get to decide how stiff you want the fabric to be. With Stay Flow, a concentrate. You mix it, you put it in a spray bottle, and you are good to go. <laughs> so I love that. So that's another thing that is a staple in my fabric prep is including something that's going to minimize the amount of movement in the fabric. Okay, so what is next? Some like to use Mary Ellen's Best Press. I want to give you options. You don't have to use what I use or do what I do. I just want to share with you the tools that give me success. And maybe you can try it, see if you like it. And if you like it, incorporate it in your sewing and crafting supplies. And if you don't, you try something else. We always like to get recommendations. Someone has tried it to see what result they got. Was it successful? Was it good for them? Easy to use, not complicated, etc., etc. All right, now we've talked about templates, cutting tools, pressing tools. We need a sewing machine. <laughs> we need a sewing machine. Do you have a good sewing machine? Now, my good friend Wilda, remember I mentioned recommendations? Sometimes we don't have an ear to hear when someone gives us a good tip and recommendation. And Wilda gave me a tip and a recommendation on a sewing machine. But at the time, I didn't have a good ear to hear <laughs> that she was recommending a good machine. It took me a little while to understand what a good machine is. Sometimes we can be guided by price. Price is not an indicator of quality. Sometimes it is, but you know when you get a sewing machine and it doesn't last a year <laughs> or you wear it out too quickly, perhaps you need something more robust. So I finally invested, I look at my sewing machine as an investment because I want to use it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And so I use Janome Memory Craft. Let's take a look at my machine. Now, before I got to this machine, I've had several. I have spent money on machines that couldn't keep up. Then I got this one, this Memory Craft by Janome. I love this machine. Janome is one of those brands that makes a fabulous machine with features that I like and love. I need these features. And some of these features are the touch screen, the multiple stitches, the needle down, needle up feature, the large distance between the needle and the back of the machine. That's 11 inches. Sometimes I struggled with those earlier machines because the throat space was too small. Once I got a throat, 
throat space that was bigger, 11 inches. That was amazing. I also got a machine that came with a lot of feet and ton of stitches, stitches for different purposes, quilting, utility stitches, decorative stitching, you name it. Look at all the feet that the machine comes with. Let me tell you that each foot alone can be upwards of $50 to $100, maybe more, depending upon the foot. If you get a machine that already has all the feet, you are going to be glad. I like having a machine with a free arm, access to my feet. There's feet at the top of the machine. There's feet in the the bottom case. You get an extension table. You get everything you need. Can I tell you that I've had this machine more than 10 years? More than 10 years. It's an older model of the memory craft. The one in the carousel is a newer model. But the memory craft line with Janome has been very successful. And I love a machine that has the features that are going to help me sew my projects. Now, we all have different budgets. Perhaps you want a machine that is not so big, doesn't have to have a lot of those stitches. Janome has other models. And I put those in the carousel below. And the next one is the Janome Horizon. And I can show that to you. I'm going to highlight it in the carousel. But before we go there, I want to let you know that if you are a regular sewer or crafter, your sewing machine is one of your most important tools. It can determine your success, stitch quality, the accessory feet that it comes with, the stitching patterns that it provides. Does it stitch a nice quality stitch? You want a machine that's going to last and be durable if you are going to stitch on a regular basis. Let's take a look at um, one of these machines. I just highlighted the Horizon Memory Craft. This is also a Memory Craft machine. Let's take a look. So this is the Horizon Memory Craft. It's the 9850. It's an embroidery and a sewing machine, and it's renewed. And I'm showing this one specifically because my first Janome, I purchased it renewed, a used one. Yeah, you can get renewed, used, or brand new. To something that's going to fit your budget, but you know it's a quality machine. You do not have to always buy brand new. And so I like having that. Look at the features. It all, This one also has the touch screen. It has the, the speed. Look, it's very similar to mine. You see the controls? This is part of the memory craft line. It has reverse stitching, needle down, needle up, a scissor cutter. It also has the tray with the additional feet here on the bottom. You get a lot with this machine. Let's see what else it has here. It shows you the back of the machine. There's the front. There's for the embroidery. There's the hoop for the embroidery. So this is embroidery and sewing. What kind of machine do you need? What kind of machine do you want to have? That is up to you. It's your personal choice, right? So how about another option? Let's look at this skyline. I know a couple of quilters that have um, this skyline. Let's see if I can find it. Did I show the wrong one? All right, let me see if I can find that skyline. Um... Yep, I'm going live right now <laughs> to find the machine so I can click it and show it to you on, um, I passed it. All right, that's that one. Here is the skyline. There we go. So here's the skyline. It's a little bit different, but it has some of the same features. Needle down, needle up, the sewing machine on uh, 
a feet compartment. It has the speed control. It has a little um, digital output screen. This is another Janome memory craft, right? And this is the Skyline sewing machine. It comes with a hardcover case, DVD with instructions, a glide foot, a ditch foot, a rolled hem foot. It has a lot of feet that you get that are extra. You get all this with this particular deal. So you decide what is going to be good for you, right? I'm glad that my mind shifted and changed on how I view sewing machines. When I moved up to this sewing machine, it made all the difference, all the difference. And the closest one to that, I just highlighted in the carousel, and that's the Memory Craft 8900. This is very similar to the one I just highlighted. This has a lot of feet, an extension table. It has a lot of features that I like and use. I've had it over 10 years. Now, sometimes we do buy additional accessories. And one that I did get, and I want to show that to you in case you have a sewing machine, but you don't have an extension table. This one came with an extension table. What is an extension table? Our sewing machine bed has a flat area. And sometimes the projects we're working on, especially this tote bag, you want extra space. Another larger space so that you can rest the, all the fabric, the project, level and even. You can put the sewing machine in a table or you can get an extension table. So right now you're seeing um, where the feet are and this is part of the sewing machine. And this is part of the base of the, the flat bed of the machine when it's attached. But it's sitting on top of the included extension table. So here's the extension table that it comes with, right? You can take that off and then put this part on. And now you have a smaller surface. Do you want something bigger? You can get something bigger. There's the extension table that comes with this machine. But not every machine comes with an extension table. Perhaps you have a machine and you want one. You can get one custom made to fit your machine. And that's the wish table. The wish table by So Steady can be made to fit your specific machine. It doesn't matter what brand it is. They have a whole list of sewing machine brands that they can make it to. And I had them make one for my sewing machine. Now you're probably wondering, well, why would you do that? Now, truth be told, I used to work with uh, Sew Steady and I would bring this when I would teach in-person classes to show their extension table. But this one has a tray underneath. But you see the beauty of having a bigger sewing area? I love having a bigger sewing area a nice wide extension. Now, if you don't have space where you can put a machine in a table or buy one of those, an extension table is an option if your machine doesn't come with one. So that's what I love. I'm gonna pull out the tray and you can see it stores some of the things that I use on a regular basis, like a seam ripper. <laughs> I do use that seam ripper. <laughs> I have to confess, <laughs> I use a seam ripper, but this is another option and I like to share that. Now look at the free arm and then where the extension table comes in. When we're making quilts, especially ruler quilting or free motion quilting, the spot where those two meet has like a little ridge. It can be pretty seamless, but it still has an indentation. When we're doing certain techniques, we want that whole area to be smooth, even over the stitch plate. So we can use something called a glider or a slider. And I'm going to highlight one in the carousel here on Amazon, and I'm going to show you how you install it. 
So here it is. This is a, a piece of a silicone that is very thin and it's tacky on the bottom. It's tacky and you can smooth it out to create a nice smooth surface for your fabric to float underneath. That's why I like this. If you're doing ruler quilting or free motion quilting, you want to have something smooth over your stitch plate. There's a little hole in the center, right? And there's a hole so that you can have the needle go through. Nice, smooth. Now, it's tacky. It's not glue. It can, over time, lose its tackiness, but all you have to do is run warm water underneath. That's only because lint and dust gets underneath it and you just run warm water and then the tackiness is back. Simple, simple, simple. So these are some of the basic tools that are in my crafting and sewing, um, sewing room, my tools. I use these over and over and over for multiple projects, not just for this tote bag, but for many projects. There are two versions of the sheet that you put over your stitch plate, the Sew Steady Glider, and then there's also the Supreme Slider. They come in different sizes. Both you can trim to suit your sewing machine. I use it for my sit down long arm and I use it for my domestic machine too both. Okay, so we talked about needle. I'm going to talk about sewing machines. What about needles? Needles, needles, needles. What kind of needles do you use for your sewing machine? I like to use Smetch needles. These are Smetch needles. I get the big box for my general purpose, the ones that I can sew any and everything with. These are 8012. They go with my 50 weight thread. And it, you just want to have needles on hand. You don't want to mess around and use a dull needle. You want to use good, sharp needles. And so having these ready to go makes it easy to have needles whoops, on hand, the size that you want that matches your thread. Now, there are all kinds of needles, but different types of fabric, different types of, of um, stitching. But there's always going to be one general needle based on what you do most. General sewing, this 8012 needle is fantastic. And it's important to note that there's a needle system and a needle size. You want to make sure you're matching the needle tip and size to the fabric. You know, you don't want to use a general purpose needle if you're stitching jeans. You're going to need a jeans needle, a thicker needle, a heavier weight needle with a different type of tip. So you have to brush up on your needle knowledge, but Smets, once you find the one that you like that works for most of your sewing projects, save by getting a bundle. There is a specialty needle that I like to use for free motion quilting and ruler quilting, which is what we do with the tote bag. And that is a top stitch needle. And I just highlighted that in the carousel. Ah, Wilda says Smets is the only brand of needles <clears throat> I use, but I didn't know that they come in a box with, yes, that's right. You wanna get a good supply. Love it, love it. Mm-hmm. Quality without compromise. <clears throat> that is the truth. A box of 100, so you're always set. Um, but you can tell it's taken me a while to get through those, right? <laughs> That's because I'm using mostly my top stitch needles. I also use my top stitch needles. I like these. They have an elongated eye. They are perfect for free motion quilting, which is what I love to do. And you're going to use that with this tote bag project. Now... I have a special surprise for you when it comes to uh, thread. I want to show you some fabulous thread colors that I love from Connecting Threads. And when we have thread, 
available that we can choose the color we want. I was looking for it in the carousel on Amazon. Let's put it overhead camera. I love this cotton thread. Now, this thread matches my needle, right? So I not only make quilts, I make um, other things, placemats, um, tote bags, um, other projects, which I would use these needles for. So it was okay for me to invest in this rainbow assortment of 50 weight thread because they match this and this matches the other projects that I do. So once you <clears throat> figure out what it is you love, right? You're going to find a way to maximize your investment by getting stuff that's going to work together. Yes, it is from Connecting Threads, Deneen. It is. These are Connecting Threads Essentials. Yep. And I love these. I get the assortment and then I also like the um, gray scale. You get light white, light gray, medium gray, dark gray, and black. That's also here on Amazon. I'll highlight that in the carousel. I love their thread. Oh, Deneen, you get them too. So you like it. I love this thread. And so I love having access to thread that's going to match my projects. So I think I have, <laughs> can I confess, a lifetime supply of thread? Who's with me? <laughs> do you have a lifetime supply of thread? <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> so, uh, but... Of course, we have other options for thread, right? What is your favorite piecing thread? One of my favorite piecing threads for quilting is Superior Threads So Fine. So Wilda says she only uses connecting threads for her quilting projects. It's the best quality thread and pricing that she knows of. All right, Wilda, she said it. You heard it here, folks. She loves connecting threads. That's the only one that she used for color, price, quality, all of the above for all her quilting projects. This is a polyester, so fine polyester. This is white. This is a cream color. It's, it's three-ply, 50 weight. I also use these. I use these for um, some general sewing and piecing. I like these for that. Um, but I think I'm becoming more and more like Wilda. Some will say that we're twins. <laughs> she gave me the sewing machine advice. She's introduced me to so many different things. Thank you, Wilda. You know, when you're in a quilting community, a crafting community, you get help, right? to find products that are gonna work for what you want. So I wanna give you options, right? We always need options and you wanna find what works for you. So that's another option. That's why I put it in the carousel. If you're watching on Amazon, even though it has black thread, if you click on it, when you get to the Amazon page, you're gonna get an assortment of colors, okay? They only choose one to show in the carousel, but you click and you'll find other colors. So don't worry about that, it, that it's black and you don't need black. Just click and you'll find the color that you want. <clears throat> All right, what is next in our carousel? We talked about machines, needles, thread. These are all basic tools we need for our, our DIY projects. And these are the same tools that we use for the tote bag, for the Lydia tote bag. But we need some additional tools specific to the tote bag. All right. So just to remind you, let's go to an overhead camera shot of the tote bag. <clears throat> so here is the tote bag. And this is in the carousel, these grommets. I'm using a special um, foam on the inside for the straps and for the bag. How did I do the quilting on this, right? That's one example. Here is another example. 
the quilting, the grommets. How do we stitch this? We talked about the machine already. So we know we need a good quality machine. We talked about needles. But we're going to talk about, we talked about fabric. But now we're going to look at the other tools to make this tote. Okay. Let's look at some of the other tools. One, I mentioned foam. Salt and stable is one of the items that you want to have. Salt and stable by Annie. <clears throat> you can get it in two colors, white and black. It is a, I call it a memory foam because there's foam on the inside, right? You see that gray, that's the foam. And then there's fabric here and fabric on the other side for both the black and the white. You can do this with soft and stable. And then it will bounce back. I have done this over and over again with this soft and stable. Look, it just bounced right back. Ball it up. That means you can put it in the washing machine. It keeps its shape. So when I make a tote bag or a zippered pouch, I love to use soft and stable. That's it. Look at that. It's going to bounce right back. Memory foam. It's going to go right back. Easy peasy, right? So your bags will hold their shape because you use this foam. Now, another option is <clears throat> something that was introduced to me by Wilda. <laughs> Wilda, did you know how, that you had that much influence over me? In more ways than one, to tell you the truth, ladies, you can see this is showing you how you can use it in bags. This one is double-sided fusible. The soft and stable was not fusible. This is fusible. It's fusible on both sides. It's a little bit thinner than the soft and stable. It's not as thick. Soft and stable for placemats. Yes, Wilda. Mm -hmm. Minimal shrinkage. That is true. Yes. And so this will bounce back too, just like the soft and stable. But this one is fusible. You put the fabric on, you put heat, and then it fuses to the fabric temporarily for stitching. Okay. Uh, it's a foam stabilizer. Perfect for tote bags. It's easy to stitch, needle friendly. I use this for all my tote bags, just like the Lydia tote. So these are two options for making the tote bag. I like to use this over quilt batting. Foam is better in my opinion. So the bolzel, I just showed that to you. Fusible. Now let's look at the quilting tools. All right, so. We have some quilting tools that we need to look at and consider, all right? Before we do that, here are the grommets. These are Dritz curtain grommets. That's right. <laughs> These are curtain grommets. When you stitch my Lydia tote bag, I show you how to install these in the tote and to do it in such a way that it's going to be secure, right? I give you tips on that. There are two different sizes to it. See that this is one half. This other half has little, these are actually sharp. These will puncture the fabric so that it grips it and holds it in place. When you get the grommet, you're going to get this template. I show you how to use this template so that you can put this in the bag. So here it is. You see these grommets, they're right here. A nice finish, right? Nice and snug and tight. Nice clean finish. Not hard to do. 
All right, so that's one thing, the grommets. But you're going to use the grommets after you've quilted the tote. You've made your, you cut your fabric, you use the half hexi, then you're going to um, quilt it. And I like to quilt it with ruler quilting. And so that's what we're going to do. What do you need when you ruler quilt? You need a ruler foot. You need a ruler foot. And I have this free motion foot. This is the free motion convertible foot that comes with my Janome machine. Remember, I said that when we invest in a machine, it's going to include, and I say invest, meaning it's going to cost some money. It's going to come with a lot of the accessories that you need. There's going to be very few things that you're going to have to buy extra. In this case, I did have to get this extra foot. This is the ruler foot that you need. That's going to help you use this acrylic ruler. That's what's going to help you get the straight lines that you see. This is a adjustable foot with a screw in here in the back. I loosen that screw and then I can change this foot into this foot. I just attach this one, remove this, and then I can do it. Let me show you in a little video. So there's another example of a ruler foot. That's the Westerly Design uh, ruler foot, which you can get for most machines. You can see it's a half inch in diameter and the needle's gonna go right in the center and you need that high collar. See that high collar? You need that to be able to use acrylic rulers. There's the free motion foot, like I mentioned, that came with my machine. It has an open toe, but you can't use it with an acrylic ruler. You have to change it out to a ruler foot that's gonna glide along the edge of the ruler. That's how you get those consistent straight lines that you see in my tote bag. You can do it as well. It's gonna be guided quilting. It's guided acrylic ruler quilting. That is what you're going to do. You see how the foot it will not go over the acrylic and it won't go under when it's attached to the foot. That's what I wanted to show you so that you don't think you can use a regular foot with acrylic rulers. You want to make sure if you have the Janome convertible foot that you get that set so that you can put the higher. Hello, Benita. So glad that you're here. Welcome, welcome. Again, that acrylic ruler is going to slide along the edge. It's going to slide along the edge. And if you have the free motion foot, right now the uh, free motion uh, accessory set, the quilting frame set is on sale. And you're going to see me take off. Um, did I take off the bottom? I don't think I did. Okay, I didn't take it off in this video. But that's essentially what you would do. You would sub it out. You would sub out that acrylic ruler and you would get... Uh, a ruler foot for your Janome foot. If you don't have a ruler foot, your machine company does not make one, you can get this Wesley Design ruler foot that you see for your machine. All right, and I'm going to highlight that in the carousel. With the one that's highlighted in the carousel, let me go to the overhead camera, you can get the foot and a acrylic ruler at the same time. You can get a combination, which is fantastic. A foot and a, a ruler at the same time. You're going to need this to stitch those straight lines. So what happens is that we're going to use the ruler. Let me open up. So here is the ruler foot and you're going it's going to be attached to the machine and then you're going to stitch a straight line just like that and then you're going to turn the ruler and then stitch a straight line 
and you don't have to mark your quilt to do it. You just turn the ruler, stitch, turn the ruler and stitch. I know I'm making it sound easy. Everything takes practice when it's brand new. But these are the tools that you will use over and over again to do all kinds of stitching with a ruler foot and acrylic rulers. Now notice that this is a certain thickness. You can't use a traditional ruler like the hexagon ruler that I showed you. This is for cutting fabric and it's thinner. This is for quilting. Hey, Sharon. <laughs> You're right. I am making it sound easy, but with practice, it can be done. And I am a firm believer in practice. We need to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Um, and I like to practice with straight lines. That is what this whole tote is all about. If you've never done ruler quilting before or you're just a beginner, this tote is perfect for learning how to hone your skills with straight lines and without marking. It's gonna go very fast and quickly. You're gonna repeat over and over again. Over and over again, you're gonna do it. All right, let's see. What else is in the carousel that I haven't talked about? Oh, the spacing gauge. Let me talk about that a little bit. Especially if you're gonna take my this Lilia Tote class, you're gonna need a spacing gauge. Where is it? Here it is. Beginner, says Deneen, yes. I understand we all start somewhere. So this is the spacing gauge. If you are doing practice makes progress, exactly, Jacqueline, that is so true. Here is what this does. If you've never heard of this before, it's guided quilting. You're using the appropriate foot for the technique. You're gonna put the foot against the ruler as you stitch, right? The distance between the edge of the, the foot and the needle in the center is a quarter inch. It's a quarter inch. So that means that you know that every time you use an acrylic ruler, you're gonna stitch a quarter inch away from a certain spot. If you wanna stitch a a different way, or if you want to close off something, say you stitch a square, you want to stitch a square, and you've stitched already three sides. Let me use this as an example. I'll put this on the table on here. Let me put this here. Okay. So I've stitched here, and then I'll turn the ruler and I'll stitch here and I'll turn the ruler and I'll stitch here and then I'll turn the ruler. And now I want to make sure I stitch at where I started. I want to end where I started. You use this with the quarter inch arm. There's four. This is a quarter inch. This is a half inch. This is an eighth on this side. And then this is a whole inch. Knowing that the needle is always stitching a quarter inch away, I can make sure that I put this ruler at the right spot by taking this quarter inch arm and lining it up where I want it to stitch. I know where I want it to stitch, and so now I know the ruler's in the right spot. So that's just kind of a quick lesson on how you would use this. In the 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 uh, course to make the tote bag i give more instructions on how to use this how to use it as you're stitching to change direction to double check your needle position to double check your ruler position this is an important thing if you're doing ruler quilting you want a spacing gauge you want one of these these will help you get accurate placement of your stitching it may not make sense now, but it will over time. <laughs> it is a good investment. Okay, 
Um, let's see. Let me go back to host view. Any questions about some of the basic tools I've talked about for this tote bag class, DYI, make it yourself tote. Any questions? Because now I want to share with you something that's a little fun. And it's brand new to me. And I think um, we're always looking for ways to store things, right? I froze. Okay. Am I still frozen? Hmm. Still frozen. I don't know. I'm looking. <clears throat> Hopefully I didn't freeze permanently. I'm checking my computer. I don't see that I'm frozen. I'm checking here. I don't see that I'm frozen. I'm checking Amazon Live on my computer. I'm going to have to change this setting. Um, okay, not frozen on Amazon. Great. All right. No, I can see you as well at, on YouTube. Okay, great, Sharon. Thank you. Okay. It's okay, says Deneen. All right, great. Um, don't hesitate to ever tell me if there's a problem. I, I appreciate that. Because I can go on and on and on and if there's a problem. So have you seen these before? Do you know what these are? Thank you, Jacqueline. Have you seen these before? Do you know what these are? Now, of course, if you're on Amazon... It's in the carousel and you can see it. Ladies on YouTube, you probably have never seen these before. They're rubberized, right? Check that out. And one end is short and one end is long. Interesting, right? Interesting. Aha, Bonita got it. It's for bobbins. Correct, correct, correct. Let's take a look. This is for bobbins. So again, like I said, I saw it in the store and I said, well, I wonder if this will work. We're always trying to find a way to store our tools in an efficient way, especially when we have, okay, confess, how many bobbins do you have? 10, 15, 20? Are they half filled, partially filled, right? We always overfill our bobbins. We don't like to have the bobbin go empty, so we usually overfill. Then we have thread left over. So how do you store the bobbin with the thread color? Look at that. Isn't that interesting? I like that. It goes in the top. How oh, can I get you on Amazon? Yes, Jacqueline, I can put the link for Amazon if you want. Let me see if I can find that for you really quick. Um... I'll copy that link. All right, let me go to YouTube. Okay, let's see. So there's the link, Jacqueline, if you want to come to the Amazon side. Wilda's over here. You two can chat. So check out that bobbin topper. So you guessed right. Sharon says, too many to count. <laughs> too many bobbins to count. Yes. Isn't that true? So now it doesn't work with every spool. It works with most spools, not with everyone. It depends on how big the hole is at the top. So let's go to that. So if this one has a decent size hole, it will fit, but it does, you know, shift around a little bit. So it will, I think, fall out. Yeah, and so it did. Um, for this kind of spool, you know, it works great. It it stays on. The bobbin is, this is on snug, right? It doesn't say it works with every spool. It says it works with most. 
So I tested it out and it fits nice and snug on this type of spool. And this doesn't fall off. The bobbin stays on. It, so I like that. Did you notice that little itty bitty section? Where is it? Okay, here it is. Right there is where you can lock in the thread for the bobbin. So you can lock the thread in right there so that the bobbin doesn't unwind. If I can get it in, let's see. Let me try it low first. Take that out of my hand. Yeah, well, look, it's not really staying in. It stayed in before. Hmm, that's weird. Let me try it again on this side. Maybe it's the way I'm putting it in. I don't know. It worked when I tested it before. Okay, there it is. Now it's staying in. So that's a little catch there. So the thread can stay in. The bobbin doesn't unwind. So I like that. Now, if I tried it with the connecting threads, that hole is a little bit big, right? So it's it doesn't stay in. It doesn't stay in. So it doesn't work for all of our threads. But if you have this like on a thread stand and you're not turning it upside down, it can work. The bobbin will stay on and then you can take this off, right? Load it onto your machine. The bobbin is there. And then when you put it back on your thread rack or your thread container, often we put our threads inside containers. So this would still work. It's not like you're walking around and you're going to toss this back and forth, right? It's going to either be on a thread rack or inside a storage container. So this would still work in that sense. It just, it would fall out. So if you turn it upside down, easy, right? So we'll see. Hello, Jacqueline. Great. Hello, Linda. So glad that you're here. Welcome. Thank you for following. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So that's the first new thing. What's the other new thing? This is going to be interesting, ladies. Check this out. Check this out. This is a magnified and lit seam ripper. Look at this. I don't know about you ladies, but my eyes are not the same. They're not the same as they were five years ago or 10 years ago. This is a magnifying glass right here with a seam ripper. Oh, you're welcome, Mel. Thank you for, for, for dropping in. Thank you, appreciate you. Hope you had a good show. Those are uh, on Amazon. There's another live streamer. You can tell by the blue check mark. She's also going live. She does deals with Mel. So you can check her out. She does a lot of home related products. And if you're looking for home products, she does a cooking show sometimes. So go check her out. So let's look at a little video. So here it is. It's a decent size. It's aeronomic. I like that. It's not small. It's magnified, magnifier and a light. That magnifier does clip on. That's the on and off switch. The battery is included when you get it. Okay. So that little white tab, once I move it, now the battery has contact and the light will turn on. Look at the light. Let there be light. <laughs> Let there be light. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Look at that. Isn't that pretty good? Ah, Sharon says, oh, I want that. <laughs> and Benita likes the thread lock on the bobbin topper. Awesome. I just saw that comment, Benita. Isn't that a neat? Uh, now look, the magnifying glass can come off. So I like that they did that, that you're not tied to it. 
Sharon, you need to come on over here on Amazon so you can get it. It's on sale right now. It's 40% off, 40% off. Come on over, click the link, <laughs> come get your magnifying glass. For unsewing on dark fabrics. That's a good observation, Wilda. Yes, or working at night. Yes, exactly. And I like the cap. The cap for it is pretty sturdy. So this cap, it's serious. It's not um, thin plastic. It has some substance to it. So does the seam ripper. This part here, okay, I'm going to be safe and put the cap back on. You don't want to spill any blood, right? So this part is tacky. This is tacky. So you can grip this. It's not tacky as in glue, but you can definitely feel this and grip it, which I like that. Um, and then if you don't need the magnifying glass or you just want to use the light, oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that, ladies. Is that awesome? Oh my goodness, how many times, okay, come on. Who did not confess that they have a, a problems with their eyes, that they still have the eyes of a 20-year-old? I know I don't. But I love that light. Wilda, you're so right on dark fabric. Look at that. You bring it up and the light disperses. But when you come in close, come in close to get that seam, you are going to be ready. I love that. Now let's look at it with the light off. You're going to have to, oh my goodness. Is this great? Love it, love it. Love it, love it. Yep, put this on. Oh, and by the way, on the inside, there's a little um, section here that's like a ridge. That fits into here so that you can position it wherever you want. You know, you have options in terms of the positioning of the magnifying glass. So I like that. Pretty cool, huh? And this angles too. Did you notice that? This angles back and forth. Always finding these fun tools, right? So those were the two new to me tools that I have now incorporated in my sewing space. Still learning. I'm here. Awesome. Wonderful. Sharon made it over. Don't forget to hit the follow button. If you're getting some great tips and you want to know when I go live here on Amazon, especially for Prime Day, this is Prime Early Access Sales. This, if you are a Prime user, Evans, awesome. Started following. Wonderful, wonderful. Awesome. All right. So I think I've gone over everything in the carousel. If you're just joining me and you missed out on something and you want more information, please let me know. I would be happy to share with you. Notice the different discounts here. The Fiskars cutting mat, the 18 by 24, it is 37% off, only almost 40%. It's 37% off. I'm just going to recap all the things that are on sale today. The Aliso Iron, the Pro Iron, normally $200. That's what I paid for mine. <laughs> I didn't get it on the sale. Get yours on the sale. It is 20% off. The June Taylor Starch Savvy, that is also on sale. Look at that. What else? What else? Um... I also talked about Mary Ellen's Best Press. If you prefer that for sizing your fabric, that's also discounted. It's 25% off. I don't know what you ladies prefer or like. And one of the Janome Memory Craft Machines is also on sale, 20% off, okay? 
I'm just going down the line to see what else is on sale before I sign off. I will be back later this evening. If you have not seen my studio, my quilting and live streaming studio, I'm going to do a studio tour at 7 p.m. tonight. 7 p.m. I will be back and I will show you some of the new tech, the new gear that I use to live stream. I got a new microphone, a new um, boom arm. I love it. I love it. And some other things. You're welcome, Sharon. Awesome. Hey, ladies, don't forget... The holidays are coming, and we all have quilty friends. If you know a quilty friend that could use that seam ripper, what a great gift this will be. You will help her eyes, <laughs> and you will give her a useful gift, right? A useful useful gift. Uh, let's see what else. The convertible foot with the ruler foot um, set. That's also on sale. Again, just going through the carousel, 22% off. Yep, so that's everything. Fantastic, ladies. If you don't have questions, I am going to sign off, take a little rest, because I'm going to be back at 7. I need to reset my studio so that I can be ready to share live how I live stream and what tech, what gear, cameras, etc., computers I use to do this, even the lights. Right now I have on five lights. Yes, five different lights. Like how do I get this blue light up here? You see that little blue light? That's an accent light. Over here is a red light. That's another accent light. Very subtle, but it's there. And I'm going to share how I get this fabulous look. <laughs> well, at least I think it's fabulous. <laughs> okay. All right. You're welcome. Um, I will be on Amazon and YouTube at 7. But the 7 o'clock Amazon live streaming is going to be on my tech channel. I have a second YouTube channel. And it is called Travel and Tech. So I will be live there for all the tech stuff. It will not be on the Living Water Quilter Quilting YouTube channel. It will be on my tech channel. So, but Amazon and YouTube, but tech. I don't know if you, some of you ladies know about that. I have a second channel. You know, don't feel obligated, of course, if you're not interested. But if you know someone that live streams, that teaches in person and virtual and wants help with the tech, what gear do I use to help me teach my content, to help me teach quilting, to allow me to do, you know, overhead shots like this. People want to know, how do you do that? How, what camera are you using? How are you able to come in this close and show it sharp so that your students can see what you're talking about? Some people want to know how to do that as a teacher. So if you know someone who is teaching virtually, and they want help with their tech, I'm here to help. And so I do tech with teachers. I did that at nine o'clock today. So there's a replay. Now that you're following me, you'll get access to my live streaming channel here on Amazon and you can find the replay. So I was, early, I was live earlier and it was tech for teachers and I talked about earphones and microphones and all sorts of tech stuff. So I'll be back to do a live stream. The first one this morning was more about in-person events and some um, teaching tools that I use for virtual teaching, but it was mostly uh, travel. Um or um, video conferencing, put it that way. Tonight, it's live streaming. What computers, microphones, etc., cetera, that I use to live stream. All right, ladies, no additional questions. I was just burning some time to make sure that I did not miss any questions that you may have had. And since I don't see any, I'm going to sign off. Thank you for joining me for Quilt Conversations Live and information about the Lydia Tote. For those of you on YouTube, if you want to know more 
about the Lydia tote bag, the DYI project, and you want to make your own tote bag, you can. I just showed you all the tools that you need to make the tote bag, right? All the tools, but it's all included in the course. So click the link in the description box below in the video and you can get more information. There are videos in there, there are diagrams in there, supply lists, and guess what? Right here on Amazon, I've created a Lydia tote bag supply list. There's a special curated list right here on Amazon with all the tools for the class. You can find that on my Amazon shop. And you find that by going right over here to tools.livingwaterquilter.live. Just type that in the URL on your computer. Scroll, look for list. Then look for the Lydia tote bag list. Or you can just go to uh, my website and you can get the same information either way. All right. Wonderful. You are welcome, Deneen. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right, ladies. See you next time for another Quilt Conversations Live. Thank you, Wilda. Goodbye, Sharon. See you next time, Bernita. So glad you were here. Jacqueline. Did I get everybody? Deneen. <laughs> All right, ladies.